So if you're curious about how much sex is enough, or you're wondering how to get more sex, then this video is for you. We're gonna talk about typical sexual frequency, such as what might be considered normal. We're gonna be talking about the causes of less sexual frequency, if sexual frequency even matters, and if not, what actually matters. Welcome to the Pleasure Program. My name is Holly. I'm Victoria. We are two licensed therapists specializing in sex therapy, here to answer your questions and share our knowledge about all things related to a healthy and pleasurable sex life. We posted this short. How many times a week? Like um, three, three, four, three or four times, maybe. I'm gonna bump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. And received this comment. Genuinely, what is a good amount? I feel like I don't satisfy my fiance enough sometimes. I feel like this is a question that we get a lot um, in our own practice about how much sex is enough, especially with people who are struggling with a desire discrepancy where one partner may have a higher libido and one has a lower libido and they're trying to figure out what frequency makes sense. There's often a lot of shame and pain in wanting more or wanting less sexual frequency. Right. If you are wanting more, you might be craving it. You might be feeling unwanted or unheard or feeling like your sex life is out of side of your control and it's maybe in your partner's control. And that's really hard. And if you're here because you're wanting less of it or you're on the receiving end of pressure to have more, you might be feeling guilty or stressed. So either way, whether you're wanting more or less, this is a really painful experience. So hopefully through this video, you can get some education to help you with whatever boat you're in. So I know you might be comparing your sex life to others and trying to figure out if your frequency is normal. So let's take a look at what the research says. Before we explain to you the average frequency that Americans are having sex, there are some sex therapists that won't disclose that number. Mm. Because as soon as you throw that number out there, everybody wants to use this number as the gold standard. So take this with a grain of salt and we will explain why later in this video. The average American adult has sex a little bit more than once a week per research, right? Some, some weeks you might be having sex twice, some weeks you might be having sex zero times, but on average you're having sex about once a week. And frequency typically declines with age. According to research in your 20s, you're having sex maybe twice a week. And then as you age, that frequency declines. So that's very normal. Okay. I also want to note that mm -hmm. based on one of our previous uh, live shows where we talked about your best sex life possible, although frequency might decline with age, quality often increases mm -hmm. with age. So mm -hmm. we will link that video below so you can learn more about that. If you're hearing these numbers and you're getting worried because you know, you're maybe having sex less frequently than typical, you might be concerned about why, right? Mm -hmm. So I think we should get into the causes, some of the causes of what might be preventing more frequent sex. So we have about six of them. One of the major causes is that people don't crave sex that isn't sex worth having. That means that you want to be making sure the quality of the sex you're having is there so that you naturally desire to have sex. Right? We have uh, several videos that we will link below that kind of touches upon how you can improve the quality of the sex you're having. That was cause number one. So another cause um, can be a lack of positive interactions in your relationship. So there has been research that has shown that in heterosexual couples, uh, it's been found that a husband's positive behaviors towards their partner was associated with more frequency. Mm -hmm. So a lack of positive behaviors might look like boredom, anger, dominating the conversation, showing irritation or impatience, mm -hmm. criticizing, complaining, or having a lack of follow through between words and actions. So mm -hmm. those are some of the negative interactions that participants had described, highlighting a lack of positive interactions. So, that's another huge cause there in a lack of frequency, if there is a lack of positive interactions. Is that a lack of positive interactions just on the husband's part? Yep. According to the research, it's just on the husband's part. It, negative interactions or a lack of positive interactions from the female partner actually wasn't associated 
Ooh, we're going to get really some comments about that one. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, you would think that if the female partner, if we're talking about heterosexual relationships, yeah. that that might also contribute to a lack of frequency in sex. You would think so. You would think so. Right, but husbands, listen up. Of course, yeah, exactly. <laughs> The third major cause of a lack of sex frequency is communication. Having really good communication um, will improve the quality of your sex life, but we should talk about what kind of poor communication looks like, right? So avoiding discussing your sex life, um, not validating one another when you're communicating about issues you're having in the relationship, a lack of empathy, all of that contributes to a lack of sex frequency. It's important to have good communication about your sex life because that is how you find sex worth having, mm -hmm. like, we, like we mentioned earlier. But it's also important to learn how to communicate outside of your sex life because those positive interactions with good communication is going to get you more frequency. So another cause which is so normal is that there are seasons of life or stages of life that can create disconnection or can create a lot of stress. We've mentioned in previous videos how stress can be really, really hard on relationships, on desire, on intimacy. And there are some stages of life that happen to typically have more stress, right? Such as menopause. There might be more stress there because of hormonal changes, uh, body changes, all of that. And those hormonal changes in general can also create a lack of desire. So that stage of life can be really hard. Hormones could be one reason why you're experiencing a lack of sex frequency, a lack of desire. It's not the most common reason, but it is something to consider for both genders. Or having the birth of a child might be really hard, right? There's a period of time where you're not supposed to engage in intimacy, right? And then you're taking on these new roles of being parents. So that stage of life, it is normal to maybe have a hiccup with intimacy and frequency of sex. If you've experienced a death in the family, a loss of a loved one, if you or your partner loses your job, I mean, these are major life situations that would create hardship and sex would be the last thing on your mind, right? Yeah. Yep. Very normal for frequency to reduce during those mm -hmm. times. And if your frequency doesn't reduce during stressful times and it increases because that's helpful for some people, that's okay too. Just normalizing that oftentimes it actually mm -hmm. does the opposite. Mm -hmm. And when you get into these busy stages of life, whether it's now you're parenting or you're trying to figure out retiring or whatever is going on, you know, a lot of people don't think to schedule sex. But we've talked about how important it is to schedule sex because you schedule everything important in your life, right? Mm -hmm. Why not that? That can help with preventing any barriers to it. It can build anticipation and excitement. It's really important. Some other struggles you might be facing, depending on the season of life you're in, might be if, you have, if you're dealing with a health issue. Or Absolutely. you have a chronic health condition. Um, I think that definitely, if you're having a flare-up in symptoms, that can negatively impact your desire to want to have sex. Understandable, yeah. right? Um, if you're experiencing a disability of some sort. There's also mental health issues to consider. Anxiety can get in the way of a desire to have sex or anxiety around your sex performance. Body image issues can come up here. Those can all be some psychological reasons why somebody is avoiding sex or you're struggling with a lack of frequency. Some people can unfortunately experience a lot of pain with sex. Um, and if you're experiencing pain with sex, there is often avoidance with sex because of that. So there might be a lack of frequency there. So checking in with your partner, making sure that they're comfortable, they're not experiencing pain is really important. The sixth and final uh, cause of lack of sex frequency is a misunderstanding of your desire type. So there's two primary desire types. We talk about this in our video, is your sex drive normal? There's spontaneous desire, which is the most frequently referenced desire type. And that is where you feel desire spontaneously. You mm -hmm. feel desire to have sex in the anticipation of pleasure. Just thinking about it gets you aroused and excited. But there's another just as common and just as normal desire type, which is responsive desire. And with this desire type, 
you need to be experiencing some sort of pleasure in order to feel desire. So mm -hmm. pleasurable stimulation needs to be happening of some kind. It doesn't have to be physical or sexual stimulation, but you need to be in a pleasurable state of mind. Mm -hmm. And so we can misunderstand that and see that as somebody with low desire or a low libido, when really mm -hmm. you just need to have the right circumstances for that person to feel desire. And oftentimes, you know, we see a desire mismatch and that spontaneous desire type partner doesn't understand their responsive desire type partner. And so they're initiating in ways that would work for them, mm -hmm. but may not work for their partner because of their desire type. So misunderstanding, I think that desire type is a huge reason why there is a reduction in frequency. I know you had said six and final. We're not saying that's all and only reasons for a lack of sexual frequency. No, that's all but of just them. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> but just some main ones, you know, just to reflect on. So does sexual frequency really matter? Well, the research says, first, for single individuals, there is no association found between sexual frequency and well-being. So from that standpoint, no, it doesn't matter in terms of overall well-being and happiness. For those in relationships, well-being and frequency are only associated up to one time per week, but aren't associated more than that. Meaning, if you're having sex at least once a week, you're experiencing a higher level of satisfaction. There's a correlation there. Right. However, if you're having sex two or more times per week, there's no increase in satisfaction in your relationship. More frequency does not mean you're happier or you have more well-being. There's also been research done on married couples that have found that marital satisfaction is associated with interpersonal behaviors, so having a warm climate, they described it, and sexual satisfaction. Not frequency, just sexual satisfaction, so quality over quantity, which we've mm -hmm. touched upon a little bit before. So. Being happy in a relationship has more to do with the quality of your interactions, which is what we talked about, and the quality of sex, not the frequency of it. Does it really matter? Not as much as you think it does. It seems like everyone thinks it matters quite a lot. Sure, there is an association with up to one time a week. <laughs> Clearly, the research states that there's more to the story here, so focusing on frequency would be a mistake. It's okay to desire more or less, right? Like that's, okay. that's okay. That's why at the beginning of this video, we said there are some sex therapists that wouldn't even disclose how many times is on average because it's okay to want more or less, right? Let's talk about what actually matters. Quality. We are major proponents here of quality over quantity. I think people get caught up with the quantity of sex, the frequency of mm -hmm. sex, because it's an easy way to measure. You're just That's counting. Fair. How many times have we had sex this week? How many times have we had sex this month? How many times have we had sex in the last month? Right. If that's the way you're measuring, like how are we doing? What's the health of our relationship look like? It's an easy measure to focus on. It's a right. little trickier to measure. How's my quality of my relationship, the quality of the sex we're having? Mm. Are we feeling satisfied? Are we both exploring our fantasies? Are we communicating really well with one another? And Are we prioritizing? Yeah, are we making the time for a, a sex date or a pleasure date? It's a little more abstract and it requires a lot of other skills to focus on the quality over the quantity of the sex you're having. Right. So what really matters then if we're focusing less on quantity and more on quality? Warmth in your relationship having open-mindedness, right? Being curious, being positive. Positivity towards one another. Affection outside right. of sex. Communicating effectively and openly with each other. We hope the information in this video has helped you realize that quality matters more than quantity and gives you a little bit more context about how to go about shifting your perspective to focus more on that quality in your sex life and for the ultimate guide to your best sex life possible. Check out that live show. It's just a plethora of good advice and strategies and information. Right, that teaches you how to create sex. 